Let's take a look at the RFLC stations and the rationale behind those. The RFLC is an alternative wireless device integration for and into Infusion. It provides wireless communication with an additional family of devices that allow to value engineer a project. And so having a working knowledge of this option may help you win projects that otherwise would be lost. So let's go through the objectives. We're going to talk about the RFLC Infusion integration. We'll talk about its purpose and characteristics. I'll discuss what an RFLC station is, and we'll discuss the range, device quantity specifications, and what factors can affect them. And then at the end, we will add RFLC stations to a design center file, and then we'll connect a configure program and operate the RFLC components. So RFLC stations. Keep in mind that this is a budget type of product. Only one RFLC enabler can be implemented on a system even if there are multiple controllers. So you still have your 30 foot wire link for the antenna. You have 100 maximum devices. And once again, I have to stress this, you can only have one antenna or one enabler. So a total of 100 RFLC devices for an entire system or project. You do have a 100 foot radius, which is the same as the radio link, and you also have the same interference and attenuation that you deal with with the radio link uh, systems. It's a 900 megahertz antenna, and so it has the same type of interferences and attenuations because it's a wireless product. So let's take a look at the, some of the RFLC stations. You can see here on the Vantage objects that we have a couple of plug-in modules. One is an appliance station and one is the uh, lamp station. We also have uh, RFLC dimmer. We also have a fan control with the RFLC. There's the key fob and we also have a, a multi-location station um, which allows you to uh, do some programming onto that specific top and bottom buttons. So the RFLC, how do I attach the antenna? If there is no radio link, um, the RFLC can be powered from the controller if you want to use that. It does also come with a power supply and so you can hook up with the RS-232 control with the RX, TX, and ground, and then just utilize the power supply that it came with, or you can utilize the power that is on the controller. Let's take a look at how to add the RFLC devices to the system. I've gone ahead and over here under Vantage Objects, I brought in the ones that you see here before you. Go ahead and uh, get those all added and organized correctly and then if you look at the bus view you'll see that I've gone to the controller and made sure that the uh, port ID is the correct port ID and then if you select the RFLC link you will see that you have a start and a clear house ID we'll need this in just a moment so the first thing you want to look at though is you want to make sure that all of your stations are yellow. That is the color from the factory default, the little LEDs. Now if you look really close you'll see that it's really a red LED and a green LED. So and that's blended together to make a yellow glow. So once you have all of them in factory default you need to create a house ID. So you select one of the stations uh, centrally located close to the controller whatever helps you to uh, remember where that location is and you need to get that one to be the main one that's going to set the house ID so to do that you press and hold the buttons the top and the bottom of the dimmer push in nice and hard and after a couple seconds it'll start to blink and as it's blinking the yellow you will notice that the other stations throughout the house will begin to follow that house ID and those will all be bound with that one house ID and these are all going to green. So after all the stations throughout the entire house are showing a green LED that's flashing, go back to your first main house ID station 
Press and hold the top and the bottom again for a couple of seconds and it will go solid green. And then all of the other stations will go to a solid green. You want to check that. Once you have those all green, you're going to come to Design Center. You're going to press the Start and it will basically walk you through what I just walked you through or tell you. Uh, make sure there's green if LED is flashing. So go ahead and hit OK through that and you'll okay, go ahead and press the main house ID station three times. House ID shows up. Press stop. Then I'll do a full program to the system. So now that we've got them all bound, I'm going to put the house in, I've done the program, I'm going to put the house into configure mode. Now that the system has been in configuration mode for a little while, all the uh, stations have become enabled. It does uh, take a few minutes with the RFLC devices for the antenna to be able to reach out and talk to all of them and, and for them to come up online. Um, so, same thing as with the radio link type of systems. Once I have all of my stations showing up, I can go through and just configure those with the three tabs. So, here on the DC file, I'll start with the, the top station. Tap that three times. The serial number will show up. Move on to the multi-location. We'll skip past the scene point dimmers at the moment because we're not configuring those. And go to the last RFLC dimmer. And then to the lamp module. Here, take it out of configuration mode and do a update or full program. You may have noticed that I've been demonstrating this RFLC with some scene point dimmers. The reason behind this is because Vantage's RFLC dimmer stations are not really designed to have programming residing on the button. So you still need either a low voltage keypad or some sort of scene point dimmer that will allow you to put programming so that you can get the most out of the RFLC stations. The only differences with that is two of the stations that we have on the RFLC lineup. We have the key fob that has three buttons that you can associate tasks with and we also have here in Design Center the RFLC multi-location station which has two buttons and does not have any loads on the back half of the station. It does require power to be powered up but it does not have a light attached to it. Since these buttons are not able to be engraved we suggest and recommend that you only do simple three-way type of programming that would reside so that there's the normal affordance with this uh, toggle type of switch where I know that up can turn it on and I know that down turns it off um, so that it is normal for the client and not confusing since there are no engravings or labeling. So let's go ahead and do this. I can come in and assign the task for the lights on and I can also come in and assign the task for the lights off. Press do an update full program. Now that the system is programmed, the load is controlled by itself. But now I've created a three-way switch that also controls that. And then I can do other programmings with scenes and things like that on the scene point dimmers and low voltage stations.